The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 14018 in the name of Neil Findlay on Edinburgh Airport flight path trial, lack of community consultation. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd invite all those members who wish to take part in this debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I would also further invite members who are leaving the chamber to do so quickly and quietly, and indeed members of the public who are leaving the chamber also to leave quickly and quietly, please. I now call on Mr Finlay, seven minutes or thereby. Uh, thanks, President Officer. Um, many of us uh, use uh, air travel, whether that be for uh, work purposes or for leisure or whatever. Uh, no matter how environmentally responsible, we want to be sometimes air travel is just unavoidable. And for people living near an airport, they know and, and they accept that they have to endure uh, some disruption. However, it's incumbent upon the airport authorities to keep such disruption to a minimum and indeed to reduce that disruption wherever and whenever possible. That to me seems fair and reasonable and I think it would be fair to say most people would expect this approach to be the case. At Edinburgh Airport, uh, established flight paths have been existence, in existence for years. Communities have grown uh, around them, and people have, to an extent, learned to live with the disturbance they have caused. Uh, people choose to live under them, uh, knowing they're there, and planes uh, taken off and landing at the airport go over several industrial estates, such as Newbridge and Houston, and areas of open countryside. The airport copes well with the volume of air traffic and indeed there is uh, capacity to spare. Not everyone is happy with the current arrangements but they have been in place for some time. Therefore it was uh, with real surprise that residents in the Broxbourne, Up Hall, and Lithgow and Bowness areas found out that their homes would be sitting underneath a new flight path and that a trial was indeed underway. No consultation, no input from those affected no attempt to engage the community. The first they knew of it was when they heard uh, aircraft roaring overhead. The airport authorities say they don't need to hold a consultation. The Civil Aviation Authority guidance says, and I quote, the need for consultation prior to the approval of airspace trials is left to the discretion of the CAA. President officer, I find that completely and utterly unacceptable. Unacceptable that such a major change with social, economic and enviro environmental consequences for so many of us can proceed without any consultation with local people. Unacceptable that organisations such as the CAA and the airport do not see the need or benefit eh, of engaging the public. And unacceptable that a large company such as Global Infrastructure Partners, the company that owns the airport, fails to recognise its obligations to the community, to local businesses and to near neighbours. Here, here. Officer, I believe more than anything it is that approach that has angered local people most. Uh, why is it that corporations continue to ride roughshod over local people and think that they can do what they like and no one will notice and no one will care? But the lack of consultation is just one element of this. Let's look at some other aspects of this, particularly the business case. Edinburgh Airport say on their website, as we, uh, and I quote, as we continue to see more passengers travel through our airports than ever before, we will need to increase airspace capacity above central Scotland to cater for this growth. That is the rationale behind the trial, but the reality is somewhat different. In 2007, there was 128,000 air transport movements at Edinburgh Airport. But by 2014, that had fallen to 110,000 movements, a 15% drop using the existing, the existing flight paths. And passenger numbers are up, up to 10 million. But that 10 million and more can be comfortably accommodated within the present arrangements. So there's plenty room for expansion. And we can safely assume that the airport wasn't even at capacity in 2007, or else new trials would have been undertaken then. President officer, the reality is there is no business case based on the need for more capacity, none whatsoever. And I think the case of the 
London City Airport maybe offers a better indicator of what global infrastructure partnership are really up to. They bought that airport in 2007 for £750 million. Despite protests from local people and from the London Mayor, the bold Boris, they have rapidly expanded, increasing the number of flight, flight paths going into and flying out of the airport. The airport has been held by that venture capital firm for 10 years. 10 years. Yet that is the longest held asset that they have. And it's currently up for sale where they're expected to make a profit of £1 billion. So, I think the strategy is clear. You buy an asset, you fatten it up through more flight paths, and you flog it at huge profit, profit and the quicker you flog it, the better. It's a perfect example of profit over people, no holds barred venture capitalism. And I'm sure the chairman of GIB, one Sir John Major, will be picking up a few handy bonuses along the way. So the evidence from London and the introduction of a new flight path, despite there being a drop of flight movements at Edinburgh, makes it perfectly legit legitimate to ask if Global Infrastructure Partnership has exactly the same in mind for Edinburgh. Is not their real intention simply to fatten up the airport, no matter the impact on local people, and sell it off for a huge profit, irrespective of the impact on the local environment? And what about that environmental impact? Well, another flight path is only designed for one thing, and that's to increase the number of flights. Then on top of that, the Scottish Government has stated that it will cut air passenger duty by 50 per cent. Is it any wonder, with these two policies running, that we have failed yet again and again to meet climate change targets? Once again, we see the Government trying to be all things to all people, the friend of the airline industry, yet at the same time, the friend of the environment. But, President Officer, what has really resonated with me most is the social impact. I have had over 400 complaints alone. People losing sleep, feeling anxious, stressed, disturbed uh, because of the no noise levels generated. Scientific research tells us what happens to people when they face that number of flights above, above them and how the communities are affected. Some of the noise levels are above 90 decibels. I'll finish here, President Officer. This is an issue of grave, grave concern uh, in the east of West Lothian, Broxburn, Uphall and Lithgow and over into the Falkirk area at Bowness. Um, it highlights how we treat our environment, how we treat communities and how large companies fail to consult and think they can get away with it. I would urge the Scottish Government to intervene on behalf of my constituents, to urge the Civil Aviation Authority to stop the trial now and go back and hold a full public consultation like they should have done at the very beginning of this sorry process. Many thanks. <laughs> and I now call on Colin Keir to be followed by Gavin Brown. Thank you, uh, uh, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to be called in this debate. It's not just because uh, the airport happens to sit in my constituency of Edinburgh Western. It's also the fact that, uh, apart from the first four years of my life, I've lived no further than three miles away from the Edinburgh airport, and at this minute in time, it's probably around about two miles away. I've lived with Edinburgh Airport, and I also understand what it's like to live under a flight path. It can be distressful, it can be uh, something that really does uh, impact on your life. And I can go back to the days when you had vanguards and tridents who were vastly um, noisier uh, in their day to what we have now. And I can see why people are upset when there is a change to uh, flight paths, I can also see why they are a touch concerned or very concerned when it, they do feel it's affecting them, particularly when there hasn't been uh, an issue before. Now, in terms of complaints from my constituents, I have to say, Mr Finlay tells us there's been around 400 uh, complaints that he's had in his area. I can actually be perfectly honest and say I can count the amount of complaints from my constituents on two hands. Now, that's just the, the way it is, we're perhaps a bit more used to the issue of the airport happening on our doorsteps. Now, on top of this, I fully agree with Mr Finlay in terms of the effects that um, 
uh, excessive noise makes, it, it, definitely health issues, definitely all of these things. Environment has to be taken into consideration. I make no apology for the fact I am supportive of the airport. And I do, of course, think that these things should be consulted on, but it also should be evidence-based. There has to be something there that actually tells us. If this is proving to be so difficult for particular areas as it may be, then fine, I believe the trial would, be, uh, would then prove that we have a problem there and it could be dealt with accordingly and stopped. If it's proved otherwise, then perhaps I believe... Of course. Neil Finlay. For evidence Mr Keir uh, would like people to provide, there is one noise monitoring station uh, in relation to this, uh, this project and often it ain't working. Well, thank okay. Mr Finlay for his uh, intervention. Uh, I've made inquiries of that. As far as I know, there are three uh, uh, noise monitors scattered around. One is temporary and it gets moved, and the other two are uh, static, Cramond and Livingston. Now, I don't know what the result of these things are. That's the evidence that, need, that we need, and perhaps it actually brings forward the issue of what would you be consulting on if you don't have the evidence? And this is one of the, the arguments I have. Now, one of the things I actually do have a major problem with, and I, no, I'm, so, I'm, so, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reduced to four minutes, and I have to go forward with uh, You're the in your final minute now. And what I would say is the issue on the, uh, the business plans, particularly, yes, the Scottish Government are looking for more flights. I am fully supportive of more flights. It gives a better deal to the people of Scotland, the travelling public, the fact that the Airport is an economic driver to the, uh, to the city and to the nation. And what's more is the fact that if that were to come to some tem uh, premature end, we would have a situation where up to 10,000 jobs, either directly or indirectly, could be affected. So that's why I'm supportive of that. As I'm finishing off shortly, I will say that I believe the evidence should be brought forward. I believe the evidence should be out there it should be consulted on. I hope the Scottish Government take it into consideration. But I want to see evidence. I just don't want to see a situation where uh, we have uh, anecdotal evidence or, in fact, guesswork at the moment. OK, thank you. Thanks very much. And I now call on Gavin Brown to be followed by Hans Alan Malik. Presenting officer, thank you. Can I start by congratulating Neil Finlay on securing this debate today and also for the uh, enthusiasm and passion I think he's put into this uh, campaign uh, over the last month or so. He certainly has, uh, with the help of uh, hundreds of constituents, put this agenda on the map and it's rightly being discussed in Parliament today. Um, like Mr Finlay, I've had a substantial number of complaints from uh, residents across, across West Lothian and from the tone and tenor of the emails it's obvious to see the frustration and irritation it felt by many of them about the number of planes, about the timings uh, of the planes and about the impact it has had. And I think one of the particular uh, irritations was the fact, as Mr Finlay highlighted, was that there was no consultation. And while in strict uh, legal terms there may not be a requirement to consult, uh, the question I think for organisations should be, ought you to consult as opposed to must you? Consult. And I think there are lessons to be learned, uh, not just by the airport, but by many other uh, indeed private and public bodies there too. Whether the law requires it is one thing, uh, whether you should do it uh, or ought to do it to uh, ameliorate concerns, I think is another matter, and I think lessons must be learned there. Um, I want to come at this just from a, from a slightly different angle to try and find some solutions, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I, I address my remarks in particular uh, to the Scottish Government, who uh, may not have specific powers, but I do know the Minister has influence. Uh, the first question I want to ask is this. From the work that I have done, there seems to be, me to be no legal requirement for the trial to last six months. I've searched as much as I can, and I could be proven wrong, but I don't think there's any strict legal or regulatory requirement that it has to last six months. So the obvious question for me then is, can this trial be shortened? If it isn't going to be halted overnight, as, as Mr Finlay has requested, is there a way of shortening it by a month or two months or more and still allowing it to be considered a successful trial in terms of CAA regulations? And that way, instead of having to endure this until the 24th of December, which I understand is the current date, if it could be shortened by a month or two, while residents, I suspect, would still be unhappy about the process so far, the idea of it uh, ending far sooner, I suspect, would be better 
than carrying it on to until the 24th of December. So I've certainly written to the airport uh, strongly requesting that this be looked at in detail and can it be shortened. And I suspect if, if the Minister were minded to do the same uh, and other parties, perhaps we might get that to, to happen in practice. One of the other, that's the first issue. Second issue, Deputy Presiding Officer, is this. Um, it's more difficult, I guess, to change things at peak times. So the time when all the flights are leaving at, at 6 in the morning up to about 8 in the morning, I suspect is more challenging to change. But one of the uh, particular concerns raised with me are the overnight flights. The fact that at 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 in the morning, residents are be wo being woken up by planes, which um, is a completely different issue. And again, uh, from my uh, initial investigations, there doesn't seem to me to be any particular reason why that has to be the case. Um, and so again, I've, in my letter to the airport, I've asked them to look specifically at that. If we cannot, if the trial cannot be uh, halted, uh, and if uh, some of the timings were stuck with and can't be moved, surely the overnight flights, which are a particular concern to a number of residents, can be uh, restricted severely in terms of where they pass over, or perhaps uh, even um, stopped in their entirety in going over the residential areas. That uh, may be wishful thinking, but I have no doubt they could be restricted, at least partially. And again, if the government were minded to uh, write to the airport on those terms, at least we may get some comfort to residents, if not everything uh, that, that they're asking for. And it goes without saying, presenting officer, whether it uh, is ended before December or goes until December, um, there has to be a full consultation with all residents afterwards. The analysis has to be undertaken uh, so that decisions are taken um, for the good of residents going forward. And I'll leave it there, presenting officer. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> very grateful. I now call on Hans Alan Malik to be followed by Alison Johnston. Thank you very much and good afternoon, presiding officer. I also thank Neil Finley for bringing this very important debate today. I understand that the new route trial out of Edinburgh Airport began on the 25th of June uh, and will last for approximately six months, ending on the 24th of December. They started the trial of the new standard institute, instrument departure SID route for aircraft departing to the west of the airport. However, residents are uh, concerned that they have been notified of the trial but not consulted. Airports are permitted, uh, uh, permitted a certain amount of discretion by the Civil Aviation Authority as to whether they consult, but it's good practice to do so. It's not only good practice, but I believe it is a moral duty to do so. It is clear to me that Edinburgh Airport has not carried out a serious consultation, even though they plan to expand. It's a good that air passengers in Scotland are given an increasing array of choice, but this must be carefully thought out. The lack of consultation puts airports and its surroundings at risk on a number of levels, different levels. I understand that Edinburgh Airport is in negotiations with the Chinese airline to run, to run a new route from Scotland. So I am astounded that, I am assuming that Glasgow Airport is attempting a similar uh, bid. The airlines will choose based on the aspects such as the ability to have a stable airport. So Edinburgh may have shot itself on the foot in terms of that particular airline. As Edinburgh Airport has committed itself to a, a full consultation if they wish the permanent change for the flight path. This means that there will still be many months of insecurity, uncertainty, and residents in particular will be very unhappy. But also, uh, I have, to, I have to say that the, the airport's ability uh, to expand the, the current plans will always be in doubt until that, that, that happens. Glasgow has an advantage in, sense, in the sense that they don't need to consult in the west of Scotland, and there is a large Chinese diaspora population. So um, I have to say to Edinburgh Airport, they really need to think their strategy out more clearly and they need to make sure that their airport is evidently based so that airlines can be attracted to Scotland. And I have to call upon the government to really 
uh, do something about this. Whilst I understand uh, what the legislation currently is, what I don't understand is why the Scottish Government is not taking the side of the local community, the population, the people of Scotland. I'm Members about to finish, last so you will have to, I, I, I would have, but I can't, unfortunately. Therefore, um, I know that sometimes uh, the government may, may feel under pressure, but I have to say that when the local community around an airport suggests that they wish to be consulted, I think that should happen. I think any government worth its salt would do that, would go, go that extra mile for the local community. And I think that even the airport, if he wishes to have a good working relationship with the people surrounding its environment, it needs to carry the goodwill of the people with it. So I, presiding officer, like to thank Neil Finley once again for bringing this uh, to this parliament and highlighting the, the fact that the local constituents have not been consulted to the full. And I fully support his calls for a proper and full consultation taking on board the, the wishes of the local people. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. I now call on Alison Johnson to be followed by Angus MacDonald. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I thank Neil Finlay for bringing this debate to the Chamber this afternoon. And I'd also like to thank all those constituents who have written to me and met with me to discuss this issue. This debate has certainly given us an opportunity to ensure that the voices of local communities affected are heard loud and clear. And it's about time too, because Edinburgh Airport and its owners, the global infrastructure partners, have failed to engage properly with the people that this trial impacts upon. Presiding officer, this is quite an extraordinary case and one which is causing grave concern. Without consultation, my, co my constituents have found themselves in an experiment, a new flight path trial, a six month trial. And this surprise trial began in late June and residents learned about it when flights roared overhead so low that they can clearly read the delivery. And apparently this is all okay with the Civil Aviation Authority. You know, it fits in with their guidelines. But just because you don't need to consult doesn't mean you shouldn't consult. But my constituents, as Gavin Brown has pointed out, they don't need six months. They cannot bear six months. The children who are exhausted and can hardly get up in the morning to go to school don't need six months. Those who have literally been reduced to tears by this issue because of the impact of the relentless, hugely invasive noise pollution, the effect on their health and well-being, they don't need six months. They can assure Edinburgh Airport and Global Infrastructure Partners now that this plan to grow the airport is not in balance with the needs of neighbouring communities. And Mr Gordon Dewar knows that this trial and the way it's been conducted is an abject failure on several levels. The airport and its owners have failed to be fully transparent with local companies. And I'm absolutely certain that a multinational investment company will be well aware that providing community councils with information is not a comprehensive consultation. They have to rely on tiny budgets, volunteer efforts. Does the airport actually think that the, the um, community councils were going to print leaflets and go door to door in their spare time on their behalf? Well, what they have succeeded in doing is galvanising public opinion. People are now going door to door with leaflets, but perhaps not the ones they'd wanted. Now, Colin Keir would have us believe that it's necessary to carry out the trial and then consult. Would we really take that approach when it came to an issue like GM crops, perhaps? I don't think so. And does the member know how air pollution in this trial is being monitored? No. And nor, as of the August the 17th, did the chief executive of Edinburgh Airport. This is a deeply worrying case. Now, this is a company which has tried and failed, as Neil Finlay told us, to expand capacity at London City Airport and Gatwick Airport too. They want to inflate the value of their asset, they want to make it worth more, get permission to increase flights, even when, as we've heard, it is not needed. This trial has been imposed on thousands of residents under the new flight path since the 25th of June, without any meaningful consultation. And the airport has received thousands of complaints so far, and I have no doubt at all that that number will continue to grow and grow if this trial continues. It involves multiple flights every day from six in the morning till almost midnight, loud and low flights over residents. It's scheduled to last until Christmas Eve, and the noise and pollution being generated is significant. Residents know, though, that declining airport movements at Edinburgh Airport since 2008 negate any perceived need for a new flight path. 
And there's not a commitment even to a second runway until at least 2040. So what is this about? Presiding officer, in, in, in closing, the government is yet to meet its annual climate change targets. And may I suggest that this flawed trial isn't part of the answer. There are minimal noise monitors. Indeed, my constituents are monitoring more diligently the noise than the airport is. There's a lack of air pollution monitoring. And really, it is time now to look at stopping this flawed trial. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call on Angus MacDonald. Thank you. Which moves the Minister's closing speech. Thank you, President Officer. Um, the social and environmental impact of Edinburgh Airport carrying out a new uh, flight path trial is serious. Uh, and I'm grateful to Neil Finlay uh, for providing us with the opportunity to debate the issue in the Parliament Chamber. Uh, firstly, though, I'd like to congratulate Edinburgh Airport on the past expansion of its, of its business. It now provides important flight connections to Europe, the Middle East and North America, as well as to other UK airports. Uh, and as has already been pointed out in this chamber and at Westminster, uh, at a time when Heathrow is grossly overburdened with traffic, it's encouraging to see Scottish airports enhance their passenger services. Uh, a record 10.2 million people used Edinburgh Airport last year, and this figure is set to rise. And this increase in business now enables the airport to employ, uh, directly or indirectly, 8,000 people, which is good news for the surrounding area, including those who live in my own constituency of Falkirk East. However, uh, for those affected by this railroaded in new flight path, the news is not so good. Uh, I have received a number of complaints from constituents in Bowness and Blackness and the surrounding area, which forms part of the, the flight path. Uh, and I know that my colleague uh, Fiona Hislop has received a significant number of complaints and conducted a survey amongst her affected constituents. Now, my constituents have expressed deep concern not only about noise levels and pollution, but also by the sheer frequency of the flights which disturb affected constituents between 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. daily. Uh, and I heard uh, two days ago that there's also one at uh, 2.30 in the morning. Uh, that there have also been protests over how dangerously low the planes fly over houses and how they're threatening the, the wildlife in the surrounding area. A proper public consultation could have resulted in some form of compromise being reached, for example, diverting the flight path further over the first of fourth, perhaps, uh, but while the Edinburgh Airport authorities appear on paper to be committed to seeking input from the affected communities, their first token gesture at a public meeting on this issue wasn't held until mid-August, nearly two months after the six-month flight path trial commenced on June the 25th. Even then, notes may have been taken and boxes ticked, uh, so to speak, but the airport authorities failed to seek any solution to assuage community concerns. Moreover, if Following the trial, the Civil Aviation Authority give the go-ahead. This six-month-long long noise nuisance will become a permanent one. And more than that, even uh, the campaign group Stop Edinburgh Airspace Trial contend that CAA principles governing flight paths are presently being breached by the trial. The new flight path trial sees planes below 4,000 feet fly over additional areas of West Lothian and my Falkirk East constituency. And at such low altitudes, the noise impact of airspace changes are recognised by the CAA and expected to be considered as a dominating environmental factor. So in accordance with this fundamental principle, the guidelines put to the CAA are clear uh, that airspace changes should neither increase the number of people affected by the noise nor promote the dispersal of, de the dispersal of departure routes. There are many negative impacts that should have been considered before the trial went ahead, for instance, people's health. Uh, proven studies show noise pollution can cause drastic developmental effects on people's well-being, including sleep deprivation and stress. And I've heard at first hand how my constituents have been affected by sleep deprivation. Uh, there's also been a marked lack of transparency. The flight path monitors, uh, whereby flights can fly one mile either side of the defined flight line, was not published. And information regarding the monitoring of sound levels, as we've already heard, uh, which were breached at Ojo 3 for a period of time, was also not available, uh, made available to the public. However, I do understand that a community noise report is currently being produced by independent consultants, which will be available by local residents. Uh, I note that I'm running out of time, convener, so I'll, uh, London City Airport and Gatwick Airport have already been uh, covered by a number of speakers. So uh, I think um, the, 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 the bottom line is that in, in spite of the impact this flight path trial would have on people, there was no proper consultation with the local community prior to its commencement. 
Consequently, nearly 2,000 complaints, complaints have been lodged with Edinburgh Airport so far. So, on a poignant ethical and environmental issue, issues such as this, I would urge the Government to send a clear message to the authorities at Edinburgh and other airports no implementation without proper consultation. Thank you. Thanks very much. <clears throat> and we now move to the closing speech of the Minister, uh, Derek Mackay. Seven minutes or thereby, please, Minister. I thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I think this has been a very useful debate to hear the perspective of members from across the uh, political spectrum on this issue around Edinburgh uh, Airport. I think much of the suggestions and comments have been helpful. I know that members are aware that, as Scottish Government, we have not expressed the views ministers on the flight path. It would not be customary for us to do so. We have no decision-making role, as members are aware, uh, in this issue. It would be a matter for the Civil Aviation Authority, but I have heard some very interesting points that I want to uh, return to. That said, the Government, of course, supports sustainable economic growth. The general growth at Edinburgh Airport, like the rest of aviation, is to be welcomed with over 10 million passengers and the internationalisation of Scottish business and tourist routes as well is also to be welcomed. Later today in Parliament, we will have a debate on internationalising uh, Scottish business and the other um, uh, pro-economic uh, development points of view, but we are, of course, not forgetting uh, the environment. And I would not want members to be accused of hypocrisy being anti-airport one minute and pro-airport development the next. But that is not to say that the airport should not have engaged comprehensively and in a transparent way. I think that they should, and certainly um, to calls about uh, further engagement beyond uh, the trial, should there be a comprehensive, wide-ranging and in-depth consultation with communities, uh, of course there should. And I, uh, would Can I make some progress and then return to a further intervention, because there is a lot of ground to cover? I particularly wanted to pick up uh, Gavin Brown's uh, suggestion around um, the overnight uh, flights and also truncating the trial period. I think that is a very helpful suggestion. In terms of overnight um, arrivals, it is uh, very difficult to ban overnight arrivals, because what that could mean is that flights arriving into Scotland or into Edinburgh, if it was to happen at a, an individual airport, would simply be sent elsewhere, and if it is not Scotland. So there is a terrible knock-on consequence of that. But I agree with the, uh, pardon the, pun, the, 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 the general direction of travel of trying to minimise overnight and late evening flights and early morning flights as well. So ban, no, but better management of that, yes. I will absolutely take up the suggestion to write to, as Transport Minister, um, Edinburgh Airport to say, once you have the data and evidence you believe you require uh, to inform your decision, make the trial period as short as it needs to be. So I'll support that call and write to, to Edinburgh Airport. They uh, advise me that the aims of this trial, as the overall aims of introducing additional departure route, are to reduce congestion, increase in time departure performance, reduce fuel burn on the ground, and to meet that demand uh, for growth without building another runway. And of course, there is a debate. Is the second runway required in the short, medium or long term? I, I have my doubts about the requirement for a second uh, runway uh, as well. But for these other matters, I think the trial period, if it can be truncated, should be truncated. And I will express that uh, view from the Chamber. And I can take a quick intervention so I can cover further ground. That's fair enough. The, 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 the airport are, of course, going to uh, provide the minister with what they want to provide them with. But the reality is that there has been a 15 per cent drop in the number of movements. Therefore, the, surely the, the government must question the evidence that has been provided by the airport of the need for that increased capacity. Minister? Absolutely reassure uh, Mr Finlay that if I was simply here to speak as Edinburgh Airport, I'd be giving a completely different speech from the contribution that I'll be making. One element of the briefing note that I think we will all find very helpful, as well as the constituency members, is the main bullet point from Edinburgh Airport's briefing, uh, which says, we understand that noise can have detrimental effect on those underneath flight paths and we understand that this trail is an imposition on people who did not buy a house under a flight path. I think that is a very important point to be acknowledged and reflected upon uh, when the airport is making decisions. Like some other members, I have lived underneath a, a flight path all of my life, as it happens at Glasgow Airport. But, of course, there is an issue when 
uh, people are faced with that for the first time and that's why consultation uh, engagement is so important because it is a change to the living circumstances of people and that's why I would expect it to be conducted uh, comprehensively. Uh, there is an environmental responsibility um, as well which is to be uh, born uh, in mind. Fiona Hislop, MSP, can't express a view as a government minister, but has expressed a very strong view as constituency uh, member, one of the members uh, affected, or constituents are affected. And in terms of number of complaints, I think has been inundated through a constituency survey of hundreds of responses on this subject. Other members, Neil Finlay, Alison Johnson and others have described how constituents have contacted them as well. And I would encourage Edinburgh and Gavin Brown Edinburgh Airport to, to reflect on that uh, very, very uh, closely in terms of the objective that they are trying to achieve. Of course, this isn't a change of flight paths. This is uh, an additional uh, flight path that is being consulted upon. Now, I say this is a matter for the Civil Aviation Authority, and it is, but I, of course, have transport responsibilities, a degree of aviation policy responsibility, and environmental responsibilities um, as well. So the powers that I do have at my disposal, uh, I would use uh, very carefully to try and ensure that the right decisions are taken. But this is a matter for the Civil Aviation Authority in Edinburgh eh, Airport. And I would say to Hans Allah Malik, the intervention I wanted to make is if you are keen for Scottish Government to be able to do more, you need to support the devolution of aviation policy to Scotland so that this government, this parliament and members would be more empowered to take a, an even more proactive approach in strengthening the consultation that we would all expect I am advised by officials uh, that, yes, as members have all described, that the airport is, is I've got less than a minute left, that sweet retribution, Mr Malik, that I cannot respond to you as in the way that you couldn't respond uh, to me because I'm within my last minute. I'm now Mr. within my Malik last 30 seconds, last Mr minute. Malik. So I make the point that I would want uh, engagement, community engagement to be strengthened. I do hope that Edinburgh... Uh, airport will, will deliver what they've committed to in terms of that comprehensive engagement. People can engage with the official process and with elected members and that will be fed in. So, presiding officer, whilst I am advised that the airport is conducting this in accordance with the CAA guidance and the UK Department for Transport's guidance on environmental objectives, we would expect, as a Scottish Government, the local community's views to be taken into account fully. And while this Government and Parliament does not have a formal role in the process, I very much hope that Edinburgh Airport and the CAA reflect on the views expressed in this chamber this afternoon and engage fully with all stakeholders and communities, particularly those in West Lothian, and to bring this trial to a close as quickly as possible and consider the next stage in the process. And that's the message that I'll convey to Edinburgh Airport. Thank you very much. And now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.